Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on very basic TCP IP networking. In this tutorial, I would like to give you a very brief overview of some key concepts in TCP IP networking that are required to use and set up secure pipes. This is by no means a full tutorial on TCP IP networking or even very technical at all. It will merely help you understand better the problem secure pipe solves and how you can use these concepts to set up SSH tunnels. Okay, so let's dive right in and talk about IP addresses. So an IP address is a way for devices to find and communicate with each other on an IP network. So if I have these crude old style Macs and they want to talk to each other, A can talk to B if it knows its address. And so it can send it a message. And just like old fashioned snail mail, every message to an address has a return address. So you, B can reply to this and communication is established. Now, Currently, most IP networks are running what is called IPv4. So an address on these networks looks like this. It's four numbers separated by periods, and each of the numbers is in the range from 0 to 255. So, for example, 132.19.42.16 would be a valid IPv4 address. Now there are many kinds of these addresses, but there are two that I'd like to focus on in specific. One is called an internet routable or public address, and the other one is a private address. An internet routable address is a computer or device that has an address that is directly connected to the internet. So if I have device A and device B, maybe they're Macs, and they're connected to the internet, a sends a message directly to B's address. The magic of the internet, this information gets routed and goes to host B, and B can respond, and the message is routed and goes back to host A. Now this is great, and this is what enables all the communication on the internet, but having a public IP address, there are two drawbacks. One is that they're limited. So there's only 3 billion or so of these addresses, and with all the mobile phones and other devices that come on the internet every day, the space is quickly exhausted. The other problem with these addresses is security. So since having a publicly accessible address, you're directly connected to the internet, that means there's no buffer between you and would-be attackers. So they can send you um, overflow your computer with too much data to slow it down. They can exploit uh, flaws in the software to launch virus attacks. All sorts of things can happen. There's, there's no protection. So this is where the private IP address comes in. So private IP addresses have one of the following forms. There's 192.168.x Dot x, there's 10.x.x.x, and 172.16.x.x. If a computer has an address in any one of these ranges, that means that it's private. If it goes out and reaches a public router for some reason, the router won't know what to do with it because it's reserved for being routed in a private network. In fact, if you were to open up your Mac's network configuration and check what IP address it has, most likely on a home or a business network, it's going to have one of these addresses. Okay, so if you have one of these private IP addresses, how is it that you get from your private network into the public network? Well, that is normally done using your router. So on your office or home network, you have a few devices they're connected on a local network and that network is in turn connected with a router and that router is connected to the internet and this configuration which is the configuration almost every home or business uses right now 
solves the two problems of a public address because one, there's one IP address and it's shared. So in this point right here, there's the IP address. And two, this is also secure because hosts that try to access this IP, there's no way to get into this private network unless you change your router for that configuration. So just to complete the example, if there's a host D on the internet and host A wants to reach host D, host A will make a request, it'll go along the local network, the router will see that it's a routable IP that it needs to go to, it will send the request out over the network and back to D. D will then respond to the IP address of the router, and the router is smart enough to know that this connection that was made to D came from A. So he'll take that traffic and route it back to A. And the same thing happens for all the other hosts on the network when they go to contact another host on the internet. So in effect, there's a virtual communication that happens between this private network here and host public hosts on the internet. Okay? Now before we leave IP addresses, there's one more network that needs that bears some discussion. And that's the 127.0 oh, .x 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 network or specifically 127.0.0.1. And this is what's called the loopback network or host. And basically what this means is that there's an internal network to the computer that can be accessed from the computer to the computer itself. So if, a, if this computer sends a connection to 127.0.0.1, it's just going to go right back to itself. And you might ask, why is this useful? And for many services, such as web servers or databases and things like that, their primary form of network communication is IP. So having a local host uh, address means you can um, connect to yourself. So this also means that there's some level of security. So since any traffic in this loopback interface is not visible to, for example, the Wi-Fi network that this computer might be connected to. And this is going to become useful when we're setting up SSH tunnels. So now I'd like to work my way up a little bit and let's talk, talk about ports. So there's another level of communication on top of IP that's called TCP and that stands for Transmission Control Protocol. And basically this deals with all the complexities in communicating between hosts, whether connections get dropped, whose turn it is to reply, all that technical detail that we don't need to worry about. But one of the more important things on TCP is the concept of the port. And basically what a port does is it tells uh, a computer that you're connecting to what service you want to connect to. So there needs to be some way to say that, hi, I'm connecting to you and I'd like to, I'd like to get a web page. So there's a whole standard for different ports. And for example, if you're running HTTP, which is a web service that runs on port 80. If you do HTTPS, which is secure web pages that runs over port 443. If you're talking SMTP, which is a mail protocol, you talk on port 25, and so on and so forth. There are many, many ports. But the thing about ports is that's how people find and connect to services, through this well-known number. It is possible to run services on non-standard ports, but that would be, defeat the purpose of being able to connect to a standard service on a standard port. Okay. The final concept I'd like to talk about is called DNS. So this is an abbreviation for the domain name service. So you saw before I talked about IP addresses, but when you're on your computer and you're browsing the web, you don't type in any numbers. So Basically what the domain name service is, is it's the service that converts your addresses into numbers. So for example, 
if you have a DNS server on your internet, you have host A, and you're looking for apple.com, you'll send in a request to the DNS service, say, what's the address for apple.com? The DNS server will come back and he'll say it's 32.x.xxx or something like that. Who knows what it is? So this is the way that all the names get translated into numbers. And it actually turns out to be a fairly complicated system because names can have aliases and names can point to other names and all these sort of things. But suffice to say, you need to know a little bit about DNS to know that you need to convert letters into numbers to make communication on the internet. Now there's one final concept about names that is particularly useful with secure pipes and that's the special name called localhost. And localhost is the name that refers to this special address we just talked about 127.0.0.1. So even without the DNS system configured and going out to the internet almost every computer will know that when you type in localhost you mean you refer to itself or the 127.0.0.1 loopback interface that doesn't go out onto the public network and this is going to come in useful when we set up secure pipes and we want to make sure that information is uh, not going out onto the public internet or, or services that um, you provide are not um, available to people that you don't want okay so that's all the basic information on TCP IP I'd like to provide, which will serve as the foundation for future tutorials on setting up SSH tunnels using secure pipes. If you have any questions, you can reach me, Tim, at sp at opoet.com, or just go to opoet.com, and there are various ways to contact me on the webpage. Thanks for listening, and I look forward to hearing from you.